and the, after a time interval, less than two, the later ball is thrown at a velocity of half the first at the equal, both the balls reach to their maximum heights. At this time, the vertical gap between the first and second ball is 15 meter. I think this is something very, <laughs> you have to really analyze the problem. Carefully, you have to take help of the diagrams. This is the ball. We'll give, we'll give different colors. So the, the, the first ball, which I'm going to throw with a speed U. Ball eight is. This one, this is at t equal to zero. Okay, then, then the second ball, I'm going to throw it. Ball one, ball one will take it. This is the ball one. The second ball. I'm going to throw it with a velocity off of the, the first ball. Okay, there's some instant of time, let it be T1. And at that instant where the first ball, the first ball will be somewhere here. I think this is the very important part of the problem. The ball one where it, 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 it might have ascended some height. No. Finally, after time interval, the later ball is thrown at velocity of both the balls reach to the maximum heights. At t equal two seconds, at t equal two seconds, both the balls will reach their maximum height. Okay, this ball one will be here. It will be at its maximum height. Ball two will be at its maximum height. You can see this. So what shall I call this? This is the maximum height of the second ball. This is the maximum height of the first ball. This difference is what? 15 meter. Uh, see, if you draw a diagram, it's very easy what's going on. So all the information is what I have, I have put everything in the diagram here. Now. Let's come for this one. What is H1 M is equal to U square by 2G. What is H2 M U by 2 O square by 2G. Because with what speed the ball 2 is projected with the speed off of the first one U by 2. So therefore, this should become equal to u square by 8g. The difference of that we know h1m minus h2m u square by 2g u square by 8g. So this is equal to how much? 15. So u 3u square by 8g. Do we know you? We don't know that we can find out here now. So this will be 15 is equal to 3u square 18 to 10. Solving this uh, u square 400 meter per second, u equal to 20 meter per second. The speed of the first ball, we got the answer. The one, 
to highlight it. Answer for the first one. Now the time interval between the throw of the balls. Okay, this this T one is asking or delta T. What will be that? What is delta T? Time interval between throw of throwing of the balls. Time interval between throwing of balls here. How to calculate that? What is the time of ascent of the first ball? U by G. That of the second ball. Only time of ascent. And we know velocities. So velocity is how much? Twenty twenty by ten. Uh, this will be twenty by two ten. So this will be two seconds. This will be one second. So what is delta t? Delta t will be after certain time it was the other ball is thrown. No? So the delta t should be equal to t one minus t two. So this is the time interval already I written. So this is our answer for second one. Say I'll, I'll throw the first ball after a certain time. I'll throw the other ball. So what is the first ball? How much of time it will take to reach here? Two seconds. What about the second ball? From here, the time measurement will be one second. So there's the interval of time will come. So the first ball will take two seconds to ascend. Second ball will take one second to ascend. The difference of that time interval is what the time interval between the throwing. This is, I think, very important idea here. How you are writing this is very, very essential. The difference in the time of ascent will be the time interval between the throw. So, what is this time of ascent of the first ball? This will be time of ascent of. Second ball. Okay, this will be our answer. Hmm, finally, we got that. Huh? We have to we have to just. I think the diagrams are very essential. Once again, I'm insisting. Please do all of you. You have to understand the di uh, question. You have to read question. Then understand the diagram. Then understand the situation. Then get the diagrams. Then look at the diagrams. Bring the equations, then check for knowns and unknowns, then work out. Let me go for the next one. Uh, there's a very general problem you might have seen. I, in fact, you can try it 